All right, your favorite podcast ever is back. How's it feel to be back? Actually, feels really great. If we haven't, this is, you know, I'm going to be honest, just sitting there here across from you, it's like, I don't know, there's something about this that like it feels really nice. It does. Yeah. So we've had a whirlwind of a couple of weeks. Um, many of you joined us at Awaken Miami, which was incredible. Let's start there. What was that like? What was that like from your perspective? I only like dipped in um, a little bit, but one like massive takeaway. I I feel like when we talk about like awaken, come to this thing, awaken, awaken, awaken. It's like we actually sometimes forget like the depth of what happens at awaken. It's like it's so it's so meaningful. It's like something that's really hard to put into words because it's just people facing their shit and it's a room full of people facing like really deep shit and then leaving like a little bit freer than they were before. And like there's nothing more beautiful, even if it's just a dip in and out of like to see people just like liberating themselves. I got to ask you something. Your dad was there. Yeah. (laughs) So, so... Your mom and dad join us when whenever they can. We love hanging out and, you know, yeah. just... just. Well, my mom and I have a pact that we won't go longer than two months without seeing each other. And it's pretty wild because we've actually, since I left, have kept to that. And for living 10 hours away from each other, I think that's pretty impressive. It really is. So, yeah, they came to Miami and New York with us. So they came to Miami and New York. And, you know, it was really interesting. I actually want to talk about this for a second because, you know, your dad is someone that, like, I don't think you would have ever thought, like, would do this stuff. Or be in, it, not necessarily do it, but even, like, be interested in it. Yeah. And, and at Palm Springs, when he first did Awaken, he was the one, and your mom's done, like, Joe Dispensa, like, all the work. Your dad was the one who went in. Yeah. Who had an experience. I remember him like, <laughs> he was like crying <laughs> with the lip quivering. Like, yeah, which really, I, I didn't want to, I remember that awaken. I didn't want to have any like expectations of like what my dad, I, I genuinely didn't know if he was going to sit by the pool or like come in and join. And what I love about him, which I, I see that I got a lot of this in myself, like from him, is that like when he decides to do something, like he goes all in. And I really like respect that about him because even if it is not his thing, he went all in and he had spiritual experiences. That's right. That's right. And now it's his thing now. Well, it was funny because it would be like we would all go to breakfast, me and my mom and dad together. And then my mom and I would be like, okay, we're going to go shopping. Like, what do you want to do? And my dad would be like, I think I'm going to go... Um, I think we're gonna go sit and awaken, and we were like, "What?" Yeah, and yeah, and I'd be up there on stage doing my thing, and I'd notice him in the back of the room, and and then I'd be like, "Oh, he probably just stopped by," and he'd be there for the whole day. Yeah, he loved it. Yeah, he really did. Which, for the average like listener or or just like person, I feel like my dad is like such an amazing example because. He's not into spirituality or crystals or your human design or your fucking, he, if you met my dad, you would be like, he is the biggest like geezer. You know, and Americans don't understand what that means, but what's the equivalent? Like, just guy. dude. Yeah, He's dude. just a dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can still go in and learn and learn about yourself and heal, like, regardless of whether you're into woo woo shit or not. You know, it's a, that's one thing that I I feel like we could get across better about Awaken is that it's like, it's not, you don't have to be on a fucking spiritual journey, but do you have a bit of baggage that you want to kind of look at? Because you're living every day, like not that happy. Okay, cool. We got you. You don't have to, yeah, be a type of person to come For and sure. heal, you know? For sure. He's, he's the epitome of that example. So... When we left off, um, 
in season one. <laughs> we were... T- w- hold on a second. Wait. And then we went to Palm Beach. Let's tell them the whole story. Okay. We went to Palm Beach and left. We left in one day because a, a tropical storm, whatever the hell it's called, came. And we're glad we left because we had plans to stay in Palm Beach for a couple of days before we went to New York. We made a quick decision. We left. We went to New York. And... um and it got flooded. Florida got fl- flooded. So we made the right call and we spent, New York was fun. New York was very fun. We hung out in Brooklyn. Brooklyn is so freaking cool. Brooklyn, guys, if hell? you've never been to Brooklyn, go to Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Go stay at, what's the name of our hotel? The William Vale. The William Vale. Sick hotel. Nice, clean, modern. And I, what I loved about this place was you walk out and every day at five o'clock in the afternoon, there's softball games going on, paddleboard game, pickleball games going on. There's 30 men outside the bar drinking, shooting the shit. There's people playing tennis. Everyone's it was walking. A lot of life. There's a lot, like life is happening. Yeah. And I would have never thought to experience that. In New York, it's the complete opposite of Le- you know. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, like Leander, Texas. No, not at all. <laughs> but it was so cool to see. It was so nice to see. It really was. And as a former New Yorker, I never knew that this place, Williamsburg, like existed. Well, I know it's been like really gentrified. If like we we acknowledge it for what it is, like it wasn't. I think probably when you were growing up in New York, Brooklyn wasn't what it is now. It's like now super hip and creative. But like if you can appreciate it for like what it is now, it is super cool. It really, really is. Honest to God, like go. Go spend a couple days there. It's like out of the movies or something. Yeah. It's beautiful buildings, people walking. It was incredible. And uh, the boys came. Yeah. We had a wonderful time. It was so nice. It was really nice for the boys to like. Be with my parents. Be with your parents. I love that. It was really, really beautiful. And uh, here we are back at home. Yes. Yeah. Depressed. We're not depressed. <laughs> we always, we we come back from places like London or New York or wherever it is. And there's so much life and energy in these places. And then we come back to where we are now and where we're living. And it's really cool because it's now just actually feel we're not depressed. It was a, that's me being sarcastic. We were depressed for a couple of days. We were depressed for, for a like couple a day. of days. Like one day. For half a day. For yeah. a moment on two days. Because the change from the energy of New York to like Stickville, Hicksville, it's like we have decided we are moving. End of story. Yeah. You know, one thing that I've really learned from all of this, and this is actually to deep it is that sometimes I feel like in life we say things are fine when they're not and sometimes it just feels nice to say I'm not happy with where I'm living like why do I have to be but I'm so grateful and I'm so positive and I'm so this like sometimes like life feels hard or life feels uncomfortable or we're not happy with our work or our living situation or whatever it is and like it's okay to just fucking admit it it's okay to speak it out it's okay to want to change it's okay to want something different because this is your life. So, yeah. Go for it. <laughs> Do it. Back to the story. We left the story. We had just left Emma's um, uh, birthday party, right? We just went through all of that. Uh, and I'm coming home. And we we have a moment at the airport where like we were we were like crying. Oh, I used to just cry every time I left you. It was so rough. I would like really cry, like a baby cry. I remember when I dropped you at Heathrow and drove home, I always call my mom and I'm like, <laughs> it's so shit. It was, it, was, it was rough. Yeah. Yeah, these were those moments where we were living, you know, basically, you know, in different countries. We were doing the long distance relationship thing. And I, I remember like, yeah, it was it was rough. Yeah. It was really interesting for me because energetically for me, I went from like always like wanting you to want me to now it's like, oh no, like she wants me, I want her, we want each other. Yeah. But now we can't really have each other. <laughs> and I remember I remember like 
I think there's something to be said about that though. Like that space created like this magnet. Because like when we got back together. We were like magnets. We were like magnets. <laughs> like, like rabbit magnets. Like fucking. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> but it's the truth though. It's the truth. You know, I want to, I'm going to throw a curveball. I want to ask you this question because I remember you used to, you used to ask me like, are things going to change once we live together or the, and when we have a child together? And I want to ask you this question. I, I saw this quote by Osho and he says something along the lines of like, love is perfect until it enters into relationship because once it enters into relationship, you're all, you, uh, both people are trying to control the other one. I don't know about, that's not in our case, but it like, essentially what he was saying is like, let love be love. Okay. This is wild now because, because now we talk about like, you know, does the dynamic of being in relationship have an effect on love? On, on the, on the, on the frequency, the energy of love. I think it absolutely does. Of course it does, yeah. By the way, I think we're about to have the courage to talk about something that maybe you might be feeling. Because I remember you felt it. You felt it before we even were living together. You were like, like I mean, we, we were just so passionate. We were just so, and that time apart and that time, it was yeah. just like, you know? it changed it's changed so what are your thoughts it's such a hard one because it's like okay you let love just be love but what does that actually mean in like the 3d world because my brain is like ticking in a million directions even if you don't call it a relationship and like you don't have the expect expectations that come with a relationship and say you're like polyamorous but then there's expe expectations that come with that, that label it's like as human beings we always have to label something for it to feel like it makes sense as human beings or as three-dimensional unawakened human beings i feel like it's very hard to like transcend you can have the understanding that I am not Jen, who is in this body, who like is with Danny, who like that is not me, but I still live in that role. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. So, yes, if you're going to live in like the 5D and transcend all labels and like reality, yes. But as soon as you like enter into something with someone, it's very hard to remove all labels, all expectations, as much as we may try to. Because there's a there's a there's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you kind of get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's a third energy called the relationship. Called the, the, whatever you want to label it as. And that relationship could look however you want it to look. But it is, it's a relationship. It's a, it's an attachment. It's a bond. It's a something. Okay, let's not call it marriage. Let's not call it whatever. Yeah. But it's something that- Even if it's dating. Yeah. It just like, then we have expectations and it's the expectations that can cause suffering in- Yep, 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 yep. Relationship. Yeah. It's so interesting. I don't know if this is true, but I, I'm just like, and we're going to get to the story, but I, I just, I remember hearing once that like there was this island made I, or created, and I read it in a book called, gosh, it was like a deep woo-woo book where they went to the different chakras of the world and uh, gosh darn it, I read it like three years ago. Anyways, and he, and he mentioned something there where there was this place where people used to live and it was the heart chakra of the world. The heart chakra of the world has now changed. It's now closer to London, Astonbury. Yeah, that's where it is. But when it was there, it was like the story of like, there were no relationships. It was just, 
it was an island and people walked around like naked basically and there was not even no doctors like like you used to heal each other and everybody was just kind of like can you imagine that i can imagine it and it was love yeah because there was no ownership there was no control there was no boundaries of it, it was just love mm -hmm. like is that the epitome I feel like you can learn so much from being like in union with one person. I don't, the genuine answer is I don't know. Like, I don't know what the epitome of love actually is. So let me, so let me bring it to you this way. So this weekend we did Discover. And in Discover, uh, we, we take people through a breakdown of the different types of masculine and feminine energy, which is what we're going to get into in this episode. Which, by the way, if you want to participate in Discover, go to dannymorell.com backslash, backslash discover. discover. Uh, sign up. It's free. You'll love it. And um, and uh, we'll take you through some breath work, a spiritual journey. It'll be really profound. But in that, it said, I, I, I remember as I taught it, it like struck me. It, it like really, the words popped out at me. It says, the number one um priority of the feminine do you know what it is the number one priority of the feminine is connection by the way not man or woman uh i was having this exact conversation with um shaddy this morning connection the feminine wants connection do you know what the number one priority of the masculine is something like external something like visual freedom Ah, oh, freedom freedom so isn't it wild that that, that <laughs> like, is the fucking it's like isn't it's that the like, opposite? Like, sorry, God, but that's a sick fucking joke because like that's a sick joke, right? Because the the feminine, our heart wants to be connected, wants to have you know, but then the masculine wants to be free to go do what it wants to go do. It was interesting just today. It's like, you're back at work. You're started, And I was like, I feel disconnected from you. <laughs> you know? And I keep wanting like, baby, come in. Come in. <laughs> right? And I feel disconnected from you because you're back in your masculine. <laughs> so true. And I'm feeling like, just give me space because I'm like, I need to like focus on getting shit done. Like, this is what like you've been pushing me the whole time. Like I'm doing it now. And now you're like, but like, give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you walked into the gym as I was working out. And normally you'll walk in, you'll give me a kiss. You, you literally were like, bye, I'm leaving. And I was like, who is this woman? <laughs> I'm recalibrating. But, but, but think about that. But then the think about it from, from like a man and a woman. Like it's like when a man and a woman have sex, like that, that woman, it, now it wants that connection now. Yeah. Where the man, like the man probably wants to like, like sow his, his, his wild oats. He, the masculine wants to be free to do that. Uh, uh. And, I, and I feel like even for a woman, think about it. When a woman is out at that, in that part of her life, she's in her masculine. She wants to be, she doesn't want a relationship. She wants to be free to go out and go have fun. Go, to, go do, go do, you know, like you are when you're single. I'm thinking relevant to the story is we left each other and then this is like your favorite story to tell so i'll let you tell it we left each other because the masculine and the feminine also has different characteristics it also has different responsibilities the masculine and the feminine has different roles in a relationship right the masculine provides and protects and it hold space for the feminine the, f the the feminine when it's not in its full feminine is the masculine so in this case when the woman is in her masculine she is the provider and the protector for herself so she needs to worry the masculine the mind she needs to worry about things that you don't necessarily need to worry about when there is a masculine energy in the life of a feminine, when there is a aligned masculine male in the life of a aligned feminine female. Mm -hmm. So in this particular case, 
you said something. You were, we were still in a long distance relationship and you said, man, you know, the only thing stopping me from like flying over there more often. Like, like right now. Like I was like, right the only now, thing stopping me from flying right now is. I have to always pack a bag. Fuck it. Doesn't everyone hate packing? <laughs> and what did I say? Don't pack a bag. Just come. I was like, what? I said, just come and I'll buy you a whole new wardrobe here when you arrive. I was like, no, no, no. But like. Glitch in the matrix. Yeah. <laughs> Because you were so used to like, like that level of like providership, it, it literally, it's a, it's a break in the program that you've been working in it, that, that requires complete trust, complete surrender. Like I'm going to show up somewhere without my clothes and trust that this person is going to not only buy me clothes, but buy me the kind of clothes that I like. What, how, how much budget are we talking about? Like what? You got to let go of all of that, right? And that's what happened for us. What if it takes me to Target? What if it takes me to Target or Walmart instead of Lululemon or Aloe or Viore, where we like, you know? And that's what happened. My question to you is, what did that feel like in that moment for you? What did you go through as a woman? It literally felt like a glitch in my matrix because when you've not like experienced that in a relationship before where you feel like provided for on that level, it's like your brain doesn't know how to necessarily like surrender on that level to be like, oh, someone's got me. Okay, cool. Like it, it doesn't work like that. Your brain's like, but what if, but what if, but what if? It's, it's trying to protect you. Do you see this? Yeah, which is okay because all you've known is to provide and protect for yourself. That's right. So that's okay. Like that's all you like know how to do. So in that situation, it was like weird. And I remember actually getting to Austin and when we like went, shopping together i felt so fucking awkward i remember that too so awkward i feel like literally only in the last like six months do i feel comfortable when you like buy me something like when you buy me an item of clothing it was like just so weird to me could you see how allowing yourself to be in that space to receive at that level was it transformative in your life and in your journey? And if so, how? It's a, it's a very vulnerable place to be in because it's, it's kind of like how the journey then continued to go because when I was pregnant with Selena and I like, I remember the last Awaken that I taught, I was like teaching pregnant, breathing. And, uh, I was like, oh, I can't do this anymore. Like, so I left the app that I was teaching on. Like I left my teaching. I left a lot of my jobs and to be like solely dependent on in that phase of my life on a dude. It's like, it takes a lot of vulnerability and trust in that person. <laughs> and you know what I've learned in this process and especially coming into the season of like wanting to work again and like wanting the feeling of earning my own money. And I want to get to that. There really is like a season for everything in life. And I feel like we maybe, and me also have got caught in this narrative of like, the man has to provide. No, the man has to be in provider energy. That might not be that he can provide everything financially, but like, do you feel safe and provided for energetically by your man? Mm -hmm. That might be that he holds space for you when you're going through your seven moods in one hour. That might be that he provides in the way that like he makes a whole day of dates on a Saturday when like you didn't have the capacity to do that. You know, there's so many energetic ways that a man co can provide that in this case is financial when I 
make the decision that I want to leave work and I want to just focus on like being pregnant and becoming a new mom and like embracing all these changes in my life. Like you provided energetically and in this case financially so that I had the freedom to do that. Was I comfortable about it the whole time? Fuck no. It's a really vulnerable place to be in when you're like solely dependent on another person in that way. I remember a specific point where you came to the place where you said, you know what? Like, I, I, I've been so difficult on myself because I'm not doing all of the things that I used to do, but I finally realized the one thing that I want to do and it's to be a mom yeah that i to me that that felt like literally like the death of any unhealed masculine energy well that's like death of the maiden is what that is mm, talk to me about that that's like we go through this like crazy metamorphosis when we become a mom which is like our maiden self which is the self that is basically independent and has freedom and like who gives a fuck about like, all i need to focus on is myself and when you birth a child, you also birth this new version of yourself into the world, which is mother version of yourself. Yet in order for mother version of yourself to exist, maiden version has to die. And that doesn't always happen like, I give birth, maiden dies, cool, I'm a mom now. For me, that process looked like literally six, seven months long of craving like the old parts of me back where I did have freedom and I could do whatever I wanted and I used to work and I used to get up and like do my hair and makeup and do yoga and da -da -da -da. like that's a grieving of that version of yourself that you then like are fully surrendered to this little human that if they're hungry it doesn't matter what you've got going on whether you're fucking hungry whether you're half asleep whether your hair is over here and your clothes look shit like doesn't matter you're feeding the baby they're hungry yeah <laughs> you know so i really felt like i was avoiding the very thing that i just needed to surrender to which was being a mom and when I had that realization, it was a really huge one for me because I feel like in the past three months, I've gone really like knee deep into being a mom that I now feel really like balanced in that area. There's obviously still moments where you're like, oh, I wish I could just go on a date with you. But it's like the energy of the maiden I feel like has died and this new version of me has come about where, yeah, I do want to work and I do want to get back to doing things, but it looks a whole different way to how it did before. And I think it's, it's a really beautiful process like because it's changed me a lot as well. Um, I, 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 as a man, have never had an issue with providing. Uh, it's, it's just in my DNA. I don't know how to not do that what are you laughing about <laughs> i just got the giggle why did you get the giggles i was thinking about the amazon packages again <laughs> <laughs> you know they really want to know what I happened with the got, amazon like, packages twitch in my nose as i was like you started talking they, they want to know about the amazon package okay well i feel like it's share share your your so, part yeah yeah thank you for interrupting me by the way no problem you. so <laughs> you know i've never had an issue with that right what i will say however is that like this relationship and this journey with you and i it's been so different because now like you're spiritually awakened now so you're really able to see like you know maybe i called it the wrong death but i saw that death i literally saw like the old gen and the new you know, and, and what I will say, baby, is this, is that without this dynamic of masculine and feminine, without the dynamic of the man being able to provide energetically, emotionally, spiritually, and yes, financially, I don't know that the woman is truly ever able to experience do those deaths 
and rebirths that she has to experience from the maiden to the mother. I don't know that she's able to do it safely because if you think about it, most women are so stressed about having to be the masculine, having to be the provider. I don't think they have the option to go through that death. And I think what's happening in the world today is I think that we have a lot of women out there that are massively frustrated because they never had the space or the freedom to experience that transition from maiden to mother. Mm. Does that resonate? Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of a lot of truth to what you're saying. And I feel like you know how I see it in in relationship beyond like man woman if we just like masculine feminine talk masculine feminine there will be phases in a man's life in which he actually needs space to reconnect with like and rebalance his feminine energy and in that phase of his life does he have space to feel like he can go deep into that mm -hmm. and be provided for in a sacred energetic way by the woman i remember when i realized my mom's story and paradigm of wanting to be held and you held me yeah that was a moment where i mean i was a mess yeah so i feel like we i think that's so true what you said it's like uh, there's a lot of frustrated mothers specifically because dude being a mom's fucking hard it's the why you i feel like you can't even understand like the depths of the depths of how emotionally mentally physically spiritually challenging becoming a mother actually is and then being a mom and yeah. i feel like it's going to continue to ebb flow and change as selena grows and whatever but i feel like there is a lot of frustration in like people that haven't necessarily allowed themselves to process being a mom and letting their maiden die and then they feel very victim to being a mom and then there's a negative charge to being a mom and this is where you like you project. have like project with your children all of your frustrations you put and, and this causes wounding then on the children on the children it also can cause wounding to other mothers who it's like what people used to tell you oh you wait and see when you oh just you wait you yes wait. you wait that was all them they they were projecting their pain their trauma on you yeah and you just didn't allow it and I, I feel like I want to share something else because it's really interesting. But as the man, as the masculine in the relationship, it's really been interesting to see like everyone is different and everyone has different energy and everyone has different purpose. But I know what your purpose is. I know you're meant to be an incredible impact in this world. I know you're gifting me. I mean, shit, just listen to her talk and the wisdom that comes out of you. So when you weren't doing your thing, it was so frustrating for me. It really was. So it's like this, this dynamic where it's like on one end, you were like knee deep in motherhood and feminine, but like, <laughs> I don't know that that was that sexy for me, to be honest with you. Like, you know, there's something sexy about you like getting up and doing your thing and having a mission and having a vision and having a purpose. And yes, being in that masculine energy. And there's something I feel very proud to be able to hold the space and provide so that you can go become whatever it is that you want to become. Mm -hmm. And like in truth, like now seeing you back where you are right now, I'm attracted to it. You know what I think is the most attractive thing in a human being is someone that's in their purpose. That's right. And I know for me, yes, being a mom is part of my identity. However, I'm not 
like my purpose i i know women out there who like their purpose is like motherhood like not just in the way that they mother their children but the way they like mother the community and the like that's their purpose like maybe they're teachers or help people children with disabilities or like you know who they are right it's like in their blood right like, I feel like my sister is one of those. Samantha. Yeah. Oh, my God. You see, you didn't have to send me what I know. She's like, it's like in her blood. I used to have a, um, a friend at university. It's like she mothered me. She's just like a mum. She doesn't have kids, but right? Yeah, yeah. But that's not me. That's not that's not my purpose and that's okay that's but okay. i think i think what you're finding like attractive in me now is just seeing me like baby i just want you living in your purpose yeah and that is attractive yeah it's like when i see you on stage at awaken and i know you're like so in your don't make me laugh oh you get you get horny. do i make you horny <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> you being in your purpose is super attractive. Yeah, this was good. Yeah. Masculine, feminine, and motherhood. I think that's a nice title. Sweet. The masculine, the feminine, and motherhood. I think this is a, by the way, babe, I, I want to honor you. Like you did a wonderful job today. Like, <laughs> no, 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 really. Like what you said, I think a lot of women are going to be like, you'll see it in the comments on YouTube. You, they're going to be like, what she yeah i i really feel like what you said is going to connect with women at the soul level i i feel like you're gonna you put into words what millions of women have been feeling for a very long time mm. so thank you for that thank you yeah it feels like this, these past like two years of being in this whirlwind it like it feels like part of like my soul's journey and it feels like coming out the other end of it and like dying and rebirthing i feel like yeah it's finally like coming out of me now so oh, that that's yeah which yeah. feels really nice so yeah do you want to answer a question yeah let's do it real fast what are your thoughts about casual sex i have so many mm-hmm because I have my views and my thoughts when I was the good guy. And then I have my views and thoughts, like the more and more you spiritually awaken, the more and more that you return to love. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this. In my deepest journey ever with the medicine, I remember getting to a space where I realized once and for all that we as human beings have no barriers. No barriers at all. Meaning there is no right, there is no wrong. You are literally free to live life however it is that you want to. And with that being said, what I will say is that Before I met you, I kept myself energetically clean. I, I didn't allow myself to sleep around too much. I've never been one of those guys. Like we were watching the show where they asked, how many partners have you had with? I'm an under 20 guy. And there's a lot of guys that are like over 100. Mm -hmm. like, you know, um, I'm not going to ask you your number. But, but that's not right or wrong like that's where i was at in my life back then now what i will say and this is truth because i heard it directly from source was when i was ready i had done all the work and i was finally ready to like call you into my life i was specifically given a message that said you are to be absent for the next six months mm -hmm. i've heard people that were absent for 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 a year, two years, three years, everyone's journey is different. The key is that you understand that when you are celibate, what you are actually doing is allowing your energetic and auric field to cleanse itself. It's a, it's a process of cleansing your energy 
It's a process of removing any energetic blockages with cord cutting and all the work that we do to allow room for new energy. So what are my thoughts on casual sex? Um, number one, be careful. I say be careful because the world that we live in right now, there are a lot of people out there who have an immense amount of unhealed trauma and wounds. And in that transition or that interaction, you are passing energy to each other, just so you're aware of that. Now, if you lived on an island where there was all awakened people who had all done ayahuasca and all did mushrooms and they were all spiritually awakened, have at it and knock yourself out and have as much as you want. And that's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't. So then in the world we live in today, be careful. I just want to do like the devil's advocate thing and just give like the other side of that, like same point, but other side, which is I feel like sometimes people come into our lives um, to teach us something. And maybe like that sexual interaction, I was just literally having a conversation with a friend about this, is like, we don't know it until like we've done it and we've learned from it, you know? Absolutely, I, I, 100%. Okay, so like there could be a situation, for example, that you are messing around with a guy and all of a sudden it gets a bit carried away and you yourself don't have the confidence to say you know what like I like we've got really carried away like I, I don't really want it to go any further so then like it gets further and like the deed is done and after you feel like fucking shit should have said something I should have said no like I can't tell you how many friends and like personally situations like that may have occurred where it's like ah, oh, like I need to learn to fucking open my mouth. And like, I'm such a people pleaser that I'm too embarrassed to say, no, don't come near me. Like that situation that happened in Mexico when I called you on the beach right. and that weird dude like kissed me. And like, I, I, it like all happened so quick and like I didn't open my mouth because I just didn't want to be impolite to be like, no, don't fucking kiss me. So sometimes I feel like, we get into these casual sex situations and like we learn a lot from it, one. Mm -hmm. Two is the flip side of what you said. Sometimes we cross people's energies because actually like our soul's being called to learn something from that energy. So that person, for example, may, you may be like not so business minded. This is really like a basic example. And like that person is like really highly driven and like really business oriented. And like just by like being in their energy and like connecting energies, sometimes like something switches on in you that like you then, oh shit, like now my business is like in, going in this direction. Well, hang on. And I, and I do want to say that. I, I do want to say this is very, very true is that please remember the woman receives and the man provides. It's the same thing sexually. So if you have sex, right, with someone that has unlocked a part of their life, you literally, together, you can set the intention and the man can say, I give you, I provide for you the energy of financial abundance or whatever the case may be. This is a, is a very real thing. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Danny's giving me the weirdest faces today. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay cool thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week oh next just to let you know sorry but next week's episode is so deep we're gonna talk about danny going with his boys to the dominican republic to heal the dad heal stuff. his dad wound and me going to do ayahuasca and meeting selena in my journey for the first time Get that ready. shit's going to be wild. We'll see you next week. See you next week.